This episode of Because Science is sponsored by the Amazon original series, Carnival Row, releasing Labor Day weekend only on Amazon Prime Video. Jupiter is sometimes referred to as a failed star, but with some solar system sized engineering, we might be able to make it finally succeed as a sun. All that we would need is a black hole. Let's get technical. The idea of turning gas giants and other celestial objects into stars has been a tantalizing concept floating about scientific journals and works of science fiction for decades. The concept has come to be known as stellification, and Jupiter is the best candidate in our solar system for this kind of transformation. The fifth planet from the sun has only one thousandth the mass of our star, but it has 2.5 times the mass of every other planet in the solar system combined in ready to fuse hydrogen and helium. If our human civilization ever got to the point where we were star makers, got to the point where we could stellify Jupiter, there's a chance we could start harnessing vast amounts of energy from this new sun or even use that human hacked starlight to terraform Jupiter's moons. There are a few ways we could theoretically make this happen. We call Jupiter a failed star because when the gas giant first formed, it was only lacking the mass and therefore the gravity necessary to kick off thermonuclear fusion. For example, if future spacefaring humans could find and gather 80 times the current mass of Jupiter somewhere in space, we could start feeding it this extraterrestrial protein until Jupiter got enough sick gains that it could flex into a star. However, 80 times the mass of Jupiter is still 200 times more mass than all the other planets in the solar system combined. So even if we were able to give Jupiter more mass and make this happen, we might not be able to find that mass anywhere near us or at least be able to move it to Jupiter because it's so much, no matter how much we're able to lift. Whew. I call this one Callist Bro and this one Ganymede. Woo! Another option might be the ignition of Jupiter. As we've explained before on a previous episode of this program, there are situations where something catastrophically energetic, like a nuclear blast, could potentially cause the runaway fusion of a planet's entire atmosphere. If we knew all the right numbers and had the right nuclear device, there is a situation in which we could launch a nuclear weapon at Jupiter, and then when it exploded, it would start to fuse all the hydrogen and helium in the atmosphere and set the whole world on fire, kind of like a star. However, because Jupiter still doesn't have enough mass in this situation to sustain these fusion reactions, chances are this nuclear fire would just snuff itself out. But by far, the coolest and most interesting way we might be able to turn Jupiter into a star is by using black holes because of their incredible ability to get energy out of matter. Black holes are among the densest things in the known universe. If you had a black hole exactly this big, I've just outlined it here so that we can actually see it, it would be 600 times more massive than the moon, and it would have extreme gravitational influence. Ugh. And because of this extreme gravitational influence, matter within the vicinity of this black hole, like the air I guess I'm breathing now, would start to free fall towards this object at incredible velocities, free fall near the speed of light. Most of this matter, though, will not be falling directly into a black hole. It will be more like orbiting around it. And so to veer towards doom and fall straight into the black hole, this high velocity matter will have to slow way, way down. And as it does that, that kinetic energy will be shed as heat energy. As all this matter races towards oblivion, it forms what is called an accretion disk, where all this matter is smashing up against itself before it falls into the black hole, heating itself up to incredible temperatures. For example, with a rotating black hole, before this matter is destroyed, it can release up to 42% of its equivalent mass energy. For example, the amount of energy we're able to get out of mass from nuclear fusion is less than 1%. I could take a jar of 
argan oil, throw it into this black hole, and the energy I could get out of it could power the United States for four hours. All of it, just from one jar of sweet, sweet argan oil. So this incredible conversion rate is gonna be our power source. Oh, and 42%, 42, <laughs> coincidence? Yes. So, proceeding with black holes, our first step towards stellifying Jupiter is the non-trivial task of capturing one. Oh, I got too close! It would take seriously advanced technology, but if future humans could locate and move a black hole inside of our solar system, the next step would be to place that black hole inside of Jupiter's core. Once inside, the black hole would start slurping up all of the matter and all of the gas and create its own accretion disk, which would create the energy that we need for stellification. However, you can't just throw a black hole into Jupiter because it would punch right through. As we said before, black holes are terribly massive and dense for their relatively small size. And so if you were to just drop a black hole into Jupa Jupe's gravity well, it would just punch right through like a cannonball through a bucket of water. Instead, we would want to put our black hole in some kind of orbit around Jupiter, one that would eventually take it to the thick layers of atmosphere and terminate at the planet's core. This may take around a hundred years or more, but hey, we're reshaping the solar system. It takes time. Oh, and the scale is important here too. We do not want a black hole like this size, something you find at the center of a galaxy, because it would just obliterate the planet. No, for stellification, because black hole accretion disks can get so hot that they can outshine literally trillions of stars, the size of the event horizon for this black hole need only fit within the width of a single human hair. For this case, we only need a microscopic black hole. And once this black hole was orbited to the center of Jupiter, it would start siphoning the abundant hydrogen and helium until an ultra-hot plasma formed around this pinprick in space-time. Let's go in. Ah! As gas from Jupiter tumbles violently down into our microscopic black hole, it bumps into itself and sheds energy and carries a tremendous temperature. You may think that Jupiter could be immediately consumed by this kind of process like you may have seen in the movies, but it's actually regulated. As heat is generated in the accretion disk, this heat pushes on all of the other material trying to fall inwards into the black hole to create more heat. This then reaches some kind of equilibrium point called the Eddington limit, where the heat energy pushing outwards is now equal and opposite to the gravitational pull pulling directly inwards. At this point, this is as bright as a black hole can get, oddly enough. Eventually, over a cosmic size completion time of a few million years, the black hole burning away at the core of Jupiter would raise the average temperature of the planet to over a thousand Kelvin, and it would shine with the dull red light of a pseudo star. Our solar system would have a second sun. A black hole star in our cosmic backyard wouldn't just change the Jovian system, it would give you another reason to go out at night. Wait, how big would my head have to be to have all these things orbiting me right now? It would in less than 100 million years after Jupiter's stellification, three of its icy Galilean moons, Europa, Callisto, and Ganymede, would reach average temperatures similar to the average temperature of Earth. Water vapor and carbon dioxide would start to enter their atmospheres, and geological changes along with greenhouse gas effects could make these tantalizing worlds potentially habitable for for humans and habitable for millions of years. That is until Jupiter's black hole heart became dangerously powerful. You see, our black hole can actually produce way more energy than we need to turn Jupiter into a dim star. All right. Every hundred million years or so, our black hole at the center of Jupiter is going to increase in both mass and brightness by a factor of 10. 
After around 500 million years, Jupiter will be shining so bright that it will be as bright as the sun is as seen from Earth, and its moons will no longer be habitable. Their newly formed oceans would have boiled away at this point. So the final step in stellification is to actually completely dismantle Jupiter and remove the rest of its mass, leaving only the black hole behind for future use. Yes, in this sci-fi trade-off, Jupiter would completely disappear from the solar system, but hey, we'd get new places to live as a human spacefaring civilization for potentially millions and millions of years. Meh. But before we dismantled it, a stellified Jupiter would be something to see back on Earth, distinctly red and visible clearly in the daytime. And at night, even though Jupiter wouldn't increase the relative amount of solar energy that we get by much at all, this red sun would be 80 times brighter in the night sky than the full moon is at its brightest. You'd be able to sit outside and read clearly, maybe about how clever humans conquered the solar system. <laughs> oh, mini black hole in here! So, with the immense power of black holes, we might be able to turn Jupiter into another star. Sure, it might take millions of years, and sure, it would require technology that you and I won't see in our lifetimes, but if humans are ever to break our terrestrial bonds and become a truly space-faring civilization, we need to dream about grand engineering projects like this. We need to keep our heads not just in the clouds, but above them, because science. Plus, black holes are just cool. There's an additional advantage to throwing a black hole into the center of Jupiter if you wanted to live on one of its moons like Europa. Because this black hole would eat all of the material in the core, the core would cease to produce a magnetosphere. And so the radiation belts around Jupiter that would probably kill you if you were just unprotected and on a moon would disappear. And so then you could live on Jupa Jupe's moons even easier than that because we ate its core with a black hole. Whew, that sounds so cool. Let's do it. Thank you again to Carnival Row for sponsoring this episode of Because Science. Carnival Row is a new Amazon original series set in a neo-Victorian fantasy world filled with fantastic mythological creatures and how they interact with human society. Orlando Bloom stars as a police inspector investigating a string of gruesome murders and Cara Delevingne as a fairy refugee fighting prejudices against her kind. Watch as they carry on their dangerous love affair despite an increasingly intolerant society. Carnival Row releases only on Amazon Prime Video Labor Day weekend, so check it out. Thank you so much for watching, Carrie. If you want to interact with me or give us suggestions for future episodes, you can follow us here at these social media handles. Thanks.